with our last super fantastic woman of the day, and it's Gemma. Gemma, can you please tell me how to say your last name? Because I won't chop it up. That's I won't okay. disrespect. <laughs> Thank you. It's Limachisi. Limachisi. It's Gemma Limachisi. That's so awesome. <laughs> All right, take it away, lady. Hi. Well, uh, if you can hear my accent, I am coming to you from Australia. So it's bright and early in the morning. So good afternoon and good morning from Australia. So very excited to be here. So, yes, I am Gemma, Gemma Limachisi. I am a copywriter, a marketer, I'm a copywriting coach, and I am also an author. So that's a little bit about me. And following up, I did catch the end of that. So talking about finding ideal clients and being authentic is something that I stand for, of course, being a copywriter. And what I want to talk to you about today is a little follow on from that which is quite perfect. Um, and it's all about, I, I want to teach you a bit on how to write clear copy, really clear copy and making sure that it's bold. So I want to have a quick chat about this today because I've been seeing it come through uh, my business lately. And a lot of my clients are coming to me with quite, I always like to say messy mind, messy copywriting. So they're sort of coming to me needing help to clear it up and it, it feels a little all over the place. And because of that, on top of it, we tend to use words here and there that don't leave the message as bold as, you know, I guess it should be, right? Because it's copywriting. So the reason we do it is to get an action out of our reader. So whether it may be you know, buy the thing, sign up to my email list, click to my website, whatever it is, there's always a goal in mind with copywriting and we want that reader to do something. So the whole point of copywriting is to be writing words that are going to initiate an action. It may not necessarily always be selling something like so much ads, which is my background. And the first thing I really want to say, and the number one mistake I'm seeing at the moment is that people aren't planning. Like there's no planning in, in copywriting. And this is why it's it's looking a bit confusing and it's not getting to the point, which for you in your beautiful entrepreneur brains makes sense to us, right? And when we're so close to what we're selling and what we love, of course, it makes sense that our brains might be like, oh, a bit of this here and a bit of that and a bit of that. And, you know, we just get overly excited about stuff. And we, we you know, we should be writing copy in the way that we speak, but sometimes it can be a bit higgledy-piggledy, right? And that's not what we want. Like the whole point of copy to be clear and very bold is because we know people don't have a lot of time, right? And even if they're someone from your target audience who is looking through, let's say, your website or social media feed, and they may be already in that investigation stage. So they've already got it in their head that they're looking for something that you are selling. Even when they're in that stage, you still need to capture them. You still don't want to lose them because they're not going to be investigating just you, right? So copy to be clear and bold is super important, not only for, you know, a first time reader of your copy. So because we don't have a long time to capture audience, we need it to be clear and bold. And the number one thing, the number one mistake I see, like I just said, is not planning. Now, planning doesn't have to be anything huge and big and scary. And I know so many people will just write and not plan because it sounds scary, right? Now, I'm a planner myself. I'm a huge planner for everything because down the track, it makes stuff easier, right? If, if you're going into doing something with a rough idea in your head, that's great, but it will slow you down. It's so much easier if you've got something set. Even let's say you're writing your copy over three days. So even planning the time daily is helpful. 
I think I've frozen. Nope, there I am. Never good when you freeze when you look like, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I want you to be planning. So plan the time, but plan what you're writing. And it doesn't have to be big, scary, and terrible. So what I want you to do, whether you're watching this now or maybe watching it back, you know, grab a pen, piece of paper, or start typing, whatever it is that you're doing, and just take some of these notes because what I'm going to give you today is a few tips you can action right away. What I want you to do first, when you plan your copy, ask yourself three questions. Now, these questions will help you keep on track and they're also a reminder of what it is and who you're selling and what it is you, who it is you're talking to. So number one, what is the goal of this piece of copy? Okay, so whether it's your entire website, one social media post, if you're planning them out, a blog, whatever it may be, what is the goal? What do you want out of this piece of copy? And then next, what problem are you trying to solve? Now, that may seem you know, obvious, right? You might think, oh, I already know that. I've already done all that research. I've already done all that planning, which of course you have. However, sometimes we may forget that. And you may be looking at a different problem per copy, right? Per piece of copy you're writing. You're not going to tackle all of them in one unless it's a, you know, a huge sales page or your website or whatever that may be. So what is the goal of this piece of copy? What problem am I solving as a reminder and a focus for your copy? And how does this piece of content or copy solve that problem? So already that's going to make you be super laser focused. And that's what we want. When, when you're writing, we want, uh, I want you to have that real laser focus, that real reminder of what it is you're doing. So that's your three steps of planning your copy every single time. And it will save you time because one, you're going to have that reminder of, oh, here's a problem. Here's how I solve that. And the goal of this copy. So for example, what, what could be a goal? Maybe it's the call to action that you want. Okay, so maybe this goal is to have 10 people sign up to your email list. Maybe this goal is, you know, to get 20 people into a program or have someone click through to your website. It doesn't matter what the goal is, right? But if you keep that really specific, it's going to help you really focus on what you're writing throughout that copy based on the problems that your ideal client have and based on you as a solution to that problem. Right. So it they they the three of them flow through together. And when I've gotten clients to plan their copy in that way, it already reduces that overwhelm of, oh my God, copywriting can't deal. Hey, want to run away? You know, super overwhelming. So if you really think about doing that plan, I promise you it's just it's gonna bring that overwhelm down a bit. And it also helps to avoid procrastination. And I completely understand what it's like to put stuff off, right? We're, we're entrepreneurs. We all do it. It's totally normal. But for me, being a writer, it's the one thing I don't put off, right? <laughs> but for most entrepreneurs, it is it is super scary. This is why I help people with it. And it will really help to bring that procrastination down, maybe from up here to down a little bit. If you've got a plan, it helps you focus to start something and begin something. So number one is to plan your copy and that's already going to help it be clear and laid out and not bits and pieces here. Now, the next plan I want you to do from that, so that's very general. And then one thing I love to teach people is my next super simple plan, only three steps, and it's called the feel, no, do. So you've got those other three points. You've got your goal. You know what's happening. When you're writing this piece of copy, how do you want the person reading it to feel? What do you want them to know? And what do you want them to do? Super simple and it will really keep that copywriting clear and not confuse people. So 
feelings. Feelings initiate actions in us. That's what they do, right? This is copywriting. This is why copywriting is completely, you know, psychological based. You know, there's um, psychologists that look through all of this. Marketing psychology is something I did for a long time. So what you really want is you want your reader to feel something because when we feel something from that feeling, we then do something. So perhaps the feeling for this piece of copy is, curiosity, right? Perhaps it's excitement. Perhaps it's I don't know, anger. I, I don't know, right? It's your business, your copy. You know, you know what you want your clients to be feeling so they do something. So what do you want them to feel? What do you want them to know? What do you want them to do? Now, the know can be similar to the goal, but it's one thing. So let's say you want them to feel curious. You want them to know that you have a webinar coming up next week, let's say, and what you want them to do is your call to action. So you want them to be curious so they're getting curious about this webinar coming up and then you want them to click on the link to go through to your landing page. So it's super, super simple. And a feel no do works for really, really long copy. It works for sales pages that may be super, super long. It works for a short social media post. It's so simple yet so effective. So I'd love you to start to adopt the feel no do. Give that a go and see what happens, right? It's super helpful. It's one of my favorite things to teach. And that's how we can keep our copy super clear. And then I want to shift into giving you some tips about how to make it bold now. So we've got it nice and clear It's not confusing people. You've made your plans. You're following the plans. That's going to be amazing. So here's some tips on how to make a bold. Now, what I mean by bold is I do notice, and I have noticed this particularly lately, and maybe because we're busy, right, and we're just writing things super quickly, which is totally fine. But one of the things that happens is, yes, I want you to be writing how you speak, because your copy needs to be friendly and it needs to sound like you. And as I just heard before, this speaking about authentic, right? You need to have that authenticity come through in your words. But it sometimes when we speak, we use a lot of adverbs. Now, what I mean by adverbs is all of the words with the L-Y, right? So we're like really and very and extremely and, you know, which is totally fine, but they're not so necessary in copy. So what I want you to do is once you finish that piece of copy, um, you know, if you're going through your edit stage and all of that, I want you to do a search through the document and just type in L-Y and see what comes up. Now, you'll find there's so many of those words you don't need and they actually sort of diminish what you're saying, the boldness, right? So these are all the words I mean like very and likely and probably and those words are not necessary. So just get rid of them straight away. And next, I want you to then do a search and pay attention to the word really and very. It's these two words, again, not necessary. So the varies and the reallys, what I want you to do is look at the word next to that. So as an example, when you've got really in a word and very in a word, nine times out of 10, well, pretty much 100% of the time, you can get rid of both of those words, turn it into one word, one word that's better, bolder, maybe more powerful, right? So for example, let's say you've said it's really hot today, which it is here. (laughs) So it's really hot today, right? It's not, not that exciting. So first of all, you can get rid of those two words. You're already shortening the copy, keeping it clear. Instead of saying it's really hot, go to a thesaurus, jump onto, you know, Google and find some awesome words, more powerful, more striking words. So instead of saying it's really hot, when you say it's blistering, it's scoldering today, whatever it may be, right? So look for the words really and very, remove the word after it and those two words and look for a more powerful 
super exciting word. Let's say you've said maybe it's it's something is very good, right? Not so exciting. We can make that more powerful, right? When we say it's fascinating, right? So it's it's such a great tip to to look for those words once you're done. Remove the both of them and put in a more powerful word. It's going to keep it clearer and it's going to make it bolder. And my last tip for bold copy is I want you to remove modal verbs. Now, without being super grammatical, which is not what this is about, these are the words that are like could, might, maybe, get rid of them. They are not bold. So again, you know, and I don't want you doing all of this before. I want you to be writing your copy. This is for after of when we're in the edit phase and we want our copy to pop, right? Look for those words because they're they just, they're not bold. And I say, I like to say that it's it's like we're hiding behind our words, right? You know, maybe you want to come to my webinar, right? You, or you might like to download this form. No, like it's not, you know, it's not bold. It's not direct. So look for those mites, maybes, all of those words, woulds, coulds, get rid of them and then see if you can turn that sentence into something more active, right? So you might like to subscribe to my email list, right? Click here, subscribe today right? So just make sure it's a lot more bolder by get, getting rid of those words that sort of diminish what it is you're saying. And well, that's about all I have. I have one, one more minute. So <laughs> that's what I really wanted to talk to you about. So make sure that, you know, you're planning so your copy is nice and clear and some little tips to turn it into being more bold. And that's, that's all I have for you. Nice and short. Well, end of day <laughs> i'd love to ask a question could Please. you give those were so many tips so i totally feel like i'm i'm abusing you at this point and i and i own that because you gave so much information Sorry, i got excited <laughs> <laughs> can you give us Please. one tip on how to repurpose like what's the best piece of copy to repurpose um and just maybe something that we could turn it into easily sure um, I mean, I always like to go straight away first with a blog, but not many people are writing blogs anymore. So if you've got a transcription to a podcast, perfect. If you've got a blog, perfect. If you don't have either of those, go with one of the pages of your website because that tends to be where you've got a longer, longer form copy, right? And that can be turned into so much. It, you can turn a page of your website into close to 20, 30, 40, 50 social media posts. You can turn them. Oh, there's, there's so much. You've caught me off guard here. Do you I get help really people excited about this. Hmm? Do you help people with that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I oh would have spoken okay, so that if I had your, known. <laughs> get your link up into the chat because that's amazing. I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges, right? We sit in front of the blank Canva screen what are we going to say? And what is the picture that needs to go with it? What are we going to say? And the picture that needs to go with it. And if we were to just go to our content, we already have that speaks directly to what we do. Mm -hmm. But then again, we have that, all that content. And what do I pull out? And what's the picture that goes with it? That's the next question. So you, you're the answer. I, yes, I am. <laughs> it's so interesting you bring that up because I just did my most recent podcast episode on that because I've been having clients come and what I that's what I call part of messy mind, messy copywriting. So they're coming to me with all of these bits and pieces, right? And they're like, here's like my transcript here and i got six um, blog posts here. Here's all of these um, uh, social media posts and then giving it all to me. It's like, can we put all this together now into a website? And I'm like, mm, hang on a minute. So, <laughs> you know, I, I can help you plan all of that because yes, all content you have is amazing, but if it's messy and everywhere, you're going to struggle with repurposing it. But I, I help with that for sure. And especially social media, because that's such a big hump for everyone. It's the so. difference between a well done and decorated cake and soup. Thank you so much for being that. here early in the That's morning. Scary. I said, you said it was morning over there. I don't know how early it is. You can see it's dark here. So I'm in Maine in the U S and it gets dark because we're so far in the ocean. So we're literally yeah. on opposite 
times of the day. I'm, I'm but, 7 a.m. now. Sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we appreciate you getting up yeah. and getting on. That was oh, great. Okay. Thank you so much, Gemma. Thanks for having we me. We are going to absolutely. We are so lucky that we had this huge list of brilliant women and they all shared such great tips. I was taking notes the whole time. So I, I couldn't be on camera because I kept looking the other way and I looked rude. <laughs> so with all of the notes that I have, I'm going to pick through and see what is going to be the biggest thing for me to implement right away. And I want to ask you, what is the biggest thing that you learned today that you are going to implement right away and put that in the chat because we're really curious what you guys are getting out of every time um, we do these when talks. And then I'm going to shamelessly plug again, Haley's amazing project for helping other female entrepreneurs understand what the meaning of abundance is. And that is the first book in a series, When Books Abundance, where you will get a chapter of your own to talk about what is abundance to you? Is it money? Is it family? Is it time? What is it? Um, it's going to be a guaranteed bestseller and it will be published right in time for the International Women's Day. So, and on the back of that, I am also going to remind you that if you are looking to start a hard ticket course, um, and if you've ever wanted to write a book or have a course, and you have an idea in mind, come to my free lab and let's set you up so 2023 can be the year you earn what you deserve. So, I'm going to sign off and let you all go, and I hope to see you again um, on our next WEN Talk. And it's Haley. And Haley's I want to say doing. thank you, y'all. Everybody, let's tell Melissa Thank you for doing this and being here for the last three hours, giving of her time so generously to so fun, but do so fun. this when talk. This has been so much fun. Thank you for being our host today, Melissa. This is an event by women, for women, by our members. So I'm so glad you're here. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, guys. Thank you everybody. Have a great day. Bye.